there's an interesting story when um, when De Sansanim was first teaching in the West, he started out with a little Zen community in Providence, Rhode Island, and then people practicing there, some of the other colleges at, at Yale started inviting him, so he had a Zen center in New Haven, Connecticut, and people in Boston at MIT started inviting him, and so they established a Zen center in Cambridge, and then of course New York, and the Korean community in LA, used to invite him from time to time. So he would be in the Zen Center in Providence most of the time, but from one weekend a month or two weekends a month, he would go to another Zen Center to teach. But the schedule in the Zen Center when he was there, of course, was every single day, always, morning and evening, morning and evening, morning and evening, and then once a month, these three-day or retreats or even a one-week retreat once every couple of months. So there was this schedule, this constancy. But as American students, this is their early 70s, the mid-70s, the late 70s. There's this kind of post-60s culture of freedom and, you know, don't force things and authority and uh, too much force is not such a good thing like the way our parents lived. So one weekend he had to teach in another Zen center, in some other city, and he came back on the Sunday morning. And the, everyone in the Zen Center is asleep. It's like, this is wake up time. And he came in, what? What's going on? Why everyone's sleeping? And the, you know, the kind of the head Dharma teacher comes out and is tired. Sir, sorry, but you know, this, um, this is America and we want to make our American, one day we must make our American Buddhism. This, you know, this everyday wake up is like wonderful, but in, in, here in America, Sunday is a day of rest. You know, it's the Sabbath day, our, we were raised that Sunday we rest only, nothing. So we, you know, we have to make our American Buddhism, we need to, Maybe Sunday we don't have meditation in the morning. And there's something says, what? What do you mean by that? He said, look at the sun. The sun doesn't rest. Listen to the birds. The birds don't have a Sunday off. The dog, the cat, any kind of animal doesn't have Sunday. Why, you think, you must resting on Sunday? Any kind of animal, one day, doesn't eat, it dies. Also, Bodhisattva mind doesn't have Sunday. So this is a really important teaching. You know, the forces, the, the rules of nature, the, the, the rhythms of nature, don't have this artificial construct. This awareness is just natural law. It's not something Buddhist. It's not something dharmic or even spiritual. It's just the natural awareness of birds, the natural awareness of dogs and cats, the natural functioning of the sun, shining light equally without prejudice anywhere and everywhere. This totality of expression never varies, except in sickness. Maybe some animal doesn't eat, you know, dogs we know, or cat. Maybe not cats. Cats are always into food and rest. But dogs, if they get sick, they'll fast for a few days. We know that. So because of sickness, okay, some extra rest. Of course, this is not machine. We're not doing some sort of spiritual AI. But. We have this regularity of getting up, regularity of getting up, regularity of applying, regularity of applying. And when we do that, we connect with this awareness, which is like the sun and like the wind, always functioning, always doing its job, like a mirror. Mirror doesn't have a Sunday day off. You know, mirrors work really hard. They're, they're constantly working. Like more, your iPhone, at least you plug in to charge. Your computer, at least you charge up the battery. 
your phone, your camera. Your car needs gas. But a mirror never needs to be recharged. Isn't that interesting? So it's always working. It's always using its special mystic power to reflect constantly, 24-7. It never takes a Sunday. It never takes a moment off. So this is the power of having a regular practice every day lets us connect with that. Again, taking some time if you have some sickness is totally normal, natural. But making it a habit to do that is not so helpful. For keeping this awareness accessible. It's always there. You don't make it. Meditation doesn't make awareness. It's impossible. You can't make awareness. It's too vast. It's too inconceivable to be made by your effort. It's impossible. Nobody ever makes awareness. Nobody ever makes compassion. They are already hardwired into us. They're just called reality. So what we're doing here is we're just keeping our transmitting device a little clearer to receive the signal of that and just yeah live in harmony with that in accord with that so that's the benefit of daily practice and then over years as our body degenerates with entropy as we as the faculties start to fall apart the teeth the eyes the hearing the digestion the mobility as these physical conditions fall off one by one, or some in some great injury, some great accident, whatever, then this awareness is undisturbed to a much greater extent, let's say. And then we can enter these transitions with full seeing, full awareness, full life. People who haven't done practice or haven't even done it regularly, when those conditions change, their mentality, their thinking, their view also changes very radically. And that becomes even more suffering. It's already suffering to endure entropy and degradation of physical faculties. But when the mind is attached to those physical faculties, it suffers even more at the loss or the diminishment of them. So it's really one of the greatest things you can do for yourself is to put yourself into a consistent application of waking up, waking up, waking up. The person who wakes up doesn't make the awakened state. It's impossible. They just open themselves to it. When you wake up in the morning, you haven't made that wake reality. You've just opened your eyes open to your effort, open to your reception to the signal of reality, truth just like this. So it's great to do it with you every day. And we will continue to have this practice uh, as long as we are possibly fit to get up on the cushion or even do it standing up. Maybe at some point I'll be doing it in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> so be it. <laughs> try, try, try for 10,000 years non-stop. Perceive your already awakened state and save all beings from suffering. Thanks for your practice. <laughs> <laughs>